Okay, welcome everybody. Um, this is going to be the fourth character primer vid for Yadagarasu, four out of eight. After this video, I'll be halfway done. Um, I'm going to do Hanzo because Hanzo seems pretty. Uh, well, she seems popular. Seems like a lot of people want to hear about her tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and do Hanzo next. Um, she's quite an interesting character. Um, she's got ninja moves. She she's not really like Ibuki. Not really. Not exactly like any other character. Her special move set is pretty unique. So let me just go ahead and explain what is going on with this character. Um, the first special move you want to know about is quarter circle back kick. Her quarter circle back kick, um, the light one, doesn't have any properties. It's just an attack. It knocks them into the air, it knocks them down, but it's a soft knockdown. The hard version of the special does less damage. But the reason it does less damage is because it is super jump cancelable. When you hit with it, you can buffer down up. Not only straight up, but a super jump in any direction. And so what this move is designed for is you super jump towards your opponent, and you air reset them, and then you go for some sort of mix up. This is going to be very integral to her entire game, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But the hard version is super jump cancelable, but the light version is not. The EX version... The EX version hits four times. You can super jump cancel the second or the third hits of this. Notice three hits. Two hits. If you try to super jump cancel the first or last hits, and nothing happens. Nothing there. Nothing on that last hit either. Okay. So you can only super jump cancel the second or third hits, but you really want to super jump cancel the second hit. Because as you can see here, if you super jump cancel the third hit, you actually can't hit your opponent after that and the juggle points are wasted. I'm actually trying to hit a jumping light punch as soon as I can, and it's not actually making contact. But if you super jump cancel the second hit, then you can continue the combo. Okay. So there's a few things. So regarding that special, the hard and the EX versions will be the ones you use the most. The light version can be used in some bread and butter combos if you don't have any meter. But generally you're gonna try to combo into the hard or the EX version of this special because of its super jump cancel property and that enables you to get her mix-up game going. All three versions are punishable on block and the EX version has complete invincibility and is a good move to wake up with. Now, another one of the specials he has is half circle forward from back to forward and a punch. She sort of disappears and teleports towards you, okay? Now the light punch version will not go through another character. The hard punch version goes further, about uh, a little bit further than half the screen, and it can go through a character if they're close enough when you start. Okay, as you can see. The EX version of this move, it goes about the same distance, actually a little less, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it goes not quite as far as the hard version, but further than the light version. It finishes faster, it can also go through characters. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see here. There we go. I knew it, yeah. Now, the EX version also can be interrupted with her special moves. Right in the middle of the move, you can do her other specials. Or even her supers. That is a choice that you have. It's going to take some good execution to be able to do this. Now you might say, well, Juice, that's a half circle and then I have to do a quarterback. How do you do it so fast and how can you do that? Well. The developers actually gave a shortcut motion to this particular special move. 
I want you to look at my inputs up here. You can do it with a half circle, but you can also do it with down back to down forward. You don't have to do the whole half circle. You can just go from this corner to this corner. See this? You don't have to do that. You can just go from down back to down forward and you can just alternate just like this. So there's quite a lot that you can do with this move regarding like mix-ups and trickery. It's something you'll want to keep in mind. You can also wake up with the EX version. The EX version of this teleport is invincible to low attacks and also to throws. Now you might say, well okay, so you can do this while holding down. Does that serve any other purpose? Actually, yes it does. She has a third special move. This is a very, very unique move. I haven't really seen anything like it in other 2D fighting games. Charge down, hit up and a punch. So there are down charge special moves in other fighting games, but not a lot of command grabs involve a down charge. <laughs> this is a command grab. Her Izuna drop. You charge down, you hit up and a punch. As long as you hit that punch before you leave the ground, that's her whiff. That's when she's trying to grab. It has decent range. If you do two jabs, you're out of range. So... You, so it's nowhere near as good as, say, uh, Mega Death Pressure from Chada. It's it's not good enough to do any crazy Zangief type stuff. And the fact that you have to charge it makes it kind of difficult to just use whenever you feel like it. You have to set up the situations properly. At least with the Meatless version, that's true. However, the EX version of this command grab can be done without charge. You can just hit down up both punches. You jump over someone's head, do the command grab. You could dash forward into the EX command grab. Okay, it does a little bit more damage. And it has a, it has the same range as the, it doesn't have any additional range, but it does a little bit more damage. It can be done without charge and also it's invincible to throws. So say you jump over someone's head, a lot of players, their reaction when someone jumps over their head is to go for a normal throw attempt, which makes sense because normal throws start up very fast, so it's likely to beat anything that you try. But it will not beat this. This will beat all throws and command grabs on startup because it is throw invincible. Okay? Now, this is a charge move, so remember when I said that you can do the teleport while holding the downward directions. So this enables you to use her teleports like so, and then get the regular command grab if you don't want to spend if you don't want to spend the meter on the EX one. That gives her a little bit more freedom in how she uses it. Um, she does have uh, another thing to keep in mind. It's not a special move per se, but when you super jump, you can teleport straight down to the ground. You cannot do this on a normal jump. But to do this, you input down, down, punch during a super jump. Okay? The light punch and hard punch versions are slightly different on the distance. Um, and you can verify this if you neutral super jump. If you hit down, down, hard punch, you move forward very slightly. But if you hit down, down, light punch, you move forward just a little bit more. There is a, uh, a minimum... There, there is, shall we say, a... Wait... Actually, no. Let me back up a little bit. You can do this at any height during a super jump. On the way up. But after, after you're starting to come down, you cannot do it at any time. You can do it from the moment you start the super jump all the way to the apex of the jump. But after the apex of the jump, you can no longer do this. See that? I'm hitting down, down, punch, but it's too late. The apex or earlier. And you can do it instantly from the ground by hitting down, up, down, punch. The down, up gives you the super jump, and then if you hit down right away, it'll still give you this move. As you can see, you can be very tricky with this. Um, okay, so those are her special moves. 
Um, she has two supers, just like everyone else. The first one is quarter forward, quarter forward kick. It hits seven times, and the last hit can be super jump canceled. And just like the hard version of this kick, just like the second hit of the EX version of this one, if you super jump cancel that, you can hit them in the air and get a little hit for an air reset, followed by a mix-up. <clears throat> now, her second super has sort of an interesting motion. It's down up, down up punch. You don't have to charge. It's not charge down and then up, down, up. It's just down, up, down, up. If you don't want to jump, hit like a low jab when you hit the first down. And this enables you to hit up, down quickly without jumping. Now what this super move actually is, is a command grab. Okay, this is a grab super. It does pretty good damage. After you input the super, you teleport forwards and then the command grab happens. Now, you have to teleport to the other side of the opponent. If you don't teleport to the other side, this grab will never connect. So you have to go through. Okay, also you cannot combo into this, just like you cannot combo into the ground command grab either. You cannot combo command grabs in this game. So, in order for this to work, you have to get your opponent scared of you. But there is an interesting property about this... ...that makes it kind of useful on Wake Up. If you actually hit Hanzo on the first frame or two that she activates this move... Then you will trigger a super armor counter. She has, she seems to have super armor on the first frame, maybe two, maybe three. I haven't, I haven't really figured it out mathematically how many frames of super armor she has. But if you hit her just as it starts, then a little shadow will appear, and she will continue going through with the super. You want to keep in mind that this doesn't guarantee that this will land. It just causes a graphical effect, and the super armor counter is triggered. Remember, so it doesn't guarantee anything. But, let's say someone actually attacks you, like, um, like so. Say someone attacks you the moment you get up with a media attack. If that happens, you can use this super to go through it. Like so. Because of that little super armor frame that she has. Keep in mind, you'll take the damage, so you can't do it with no life. But this super enables you to beat a media attack. Of course, she has other reversals, like this one and this one, so it's up to your choice how much you want to use that move. But it is... It's, it's going to depend very much on the sort of player you're facing, whether or not you'll actually be able to get that teleport to trigger, or if you'll be able to get them to block enough to actually get the super to land. But it does do a nice chunk of damage, and is another way of getting your opponent to want to not sit there and block. Now. She actually has a bunch of command normals, a few more than most characters. Um, she has a forward light kick. She takes a little step forward like this. This forward light kick can be cancelled. It can be cancelled into her supers and her special moves. And you can do all the same things that she normally would be able to. This, uh, this command normal is also interesting because she can chain into it from her crouching punches. You can hit low jab and instantly chain to forward light kick, although it will not combo. However, crouching fierce punch will give you a combo, and this will look very familiar to anyone that's played KOF. And even if you chain into it, you can still cancel into it and do some very nice damage. Okay. So, Crouching Fierce Punch into Forward Light Kick is something you're going to want to be able to use just to be able to push your opponent away and be safe, and if it hits, you can do some interesting things. Now, she has another Forward Kick Command Normal, that's Forward Hard Kick. Puts her Airborne for a little bit, and it has very good distance. Her Crouching Medium Kick has pretty good distance, her trip reaches a little further, but forward hard kick reaches even further than that. So this is her longest range normal. Now, she's got dive kicks. 
Ooh, boy. These can be done during a normal jump or a super jump, but they have a very high minimum height. You can only really do her dive kicks at the top of a jump. During a normal or a super jump, doesn't matter which. And you can also not do these dive kicks when you jump backwards. You can only do them if you jump straight up or forwards. Notice that hitting light kick gives you a very, very steep angle. And hard kick gives you a little bit uh, more horizontal of an angle. Okay, now, these dive kicks. How do they compare to dive kicks from other games? What are they useful for, etc.? Well, they are very good in comparison to some other games, okay? I'm gonna set the dummy to guard one attack and then jump. If you use these dive kicks and they're blocked, no matter where they are blocked, you get frame advantage. Notice I am hitting the dummy here right on the top of her head, right in the temple. It's not really possible for me to hit this any higher. I still have frame advantage, and pretty sizable frame advantage. So if your opponent blocks way too much, is sitting there way too much, and you throw a dive kick and they block, you absolutely can use that frame advantage to go for some kind of mix-up. Okay? They do not want to block these dive kicks. If they block these, you get an excellent opportunity to do something to them. Now, keep in mind this game has parries. Not to mention, jumping in this game is not as risky as in other 2D fighters because of parries. So, a smart opponent will not allow you to be dive kicking all day, especially because there's a particular height that you have to use them from. Because you can only use them at the apex of a jump, it's unlikely that you'll be able to be very tricky with them. They're gonna see you jump up or forward and they'll say, well, she might dive kick. And if they see that dive kick, they might be able to jump away or do a parry or just, you know, avoid it in some other way, maybe by an air-to-air. -air. There's a few things that they can do, every character in the game. So it's not gonna be as egregious as, say, dive kicks from other 2D fighting games. Okay, as long as, as long as your opponent knows how to move, this will not be easy to abuse. But if your opponent is of a low skill level, and they block this or get hit by this too much, this will be the sort of move that some people think is cheap. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you pick this character. Um, there will be a lot of people that are going to complain about these dive kicks, but improperly in my opinion. Incorrectly, excuse me. Now, what if this dive kick actually hits? Well, if this dive kick actually hits, it is possible for you to combo off of it, but it depends on the height where it does hit. Let me go ahead and turn off that off. If you hit them in the head with this dive kick, if you hit them in the head with this dive kick, there's really, you won't be able to get any combos when you hit them up here. If you want to combo off of this dive kick, you need to hit them in the waist or lower. So notice that's too high, but you hit them lower, and you can combo off of this. Um, and with the light version, that'll be a little bit tougher. There's only very specific spots, but it is possible with both dive kicks to combo against a standing opponent if you're in the right spot. Now, if your opponent is crouching, you always get a combo. Even if you hit them at the highest possible spot of their head, you always get a combo if you hit them with a dive kick while they're crouching. This will be something to keep in mind if you want to improve your skill level and be more efficient with your combos with the Hanzo. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are her dive kicks in a nutshell. Um, also, she has a wall jump. If you jump backwards at the corner of the stage or forwards to the corner of the stage, you can hit up and away from the corner, up right, up left, and you will jump off of that wall and you are still in a normal jump state, or still in a super jump state. You should still be able to dive kick off of both of these. Now, uh, let's see. There was one thing I used earlier in the video that you might have been a little bit confused about. She does have an air target combo. If you hit someone in the air with an air uh, jumping light punch, you can immediately hit hard punch 
to get a quick little two-hit combo. It, it gives her some of her best damage off of air resets. But other than that, nothing really special about it. Okay. And the last thing regarding her moveset that you'll want to know is that her crouching hard punch, it has some good horizontal range on it, and it is cancelable, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I am going to say is, her crouching fierce punch is super jump cancelable on hit. You might be able to create some mix-ups off of this. Like so. But this is only super jump cancelable on hit. If your opponent actually guards this, you cannot super jump cancel it. Okay. Now what about her combo game? What? How much damage can she actually do? Well, let's start with the stuff that every character has access to. Universal Guard Break. Her Universal Guard Break doesn't have a whole lot of range, but if your opponent is blocking too much, she can make some pretty nice damage off of it. Assuming you're mid-screen, and assuming it hits at the tip, you can hit with a forward hard kick, but the timing is somewhat difficult. Also, you don't get anything else. The other thing you can do is go straight into Super 1. Her Super 1 has some nice horizontal movement on the first hit, so this enables her to combo it from pretty far away, like on that Universal Guard Break. But without meter, all you're going to be able to get at maximum range is that forward hard kick, unless you're a little closer. If you're a little closer, there's a bit more that you can do. Now, Universal Overhead Combos. Okay. If you land a universal overhead against a crouching opponent as Hanzo, you can absolutely combo two crouching light punches, and two crouching light punches enables her to do most of her combos. On light punch, light punch, you can go into super. Mix up! Um, or on two crouching light punches, if you don't want to spend a whole bar, you can spend an EX bar. Go into the EX version, same super jump cancel shenanigans. Again, this also works on universal overhead. Now, um, there is a note here that I actually discovered recently, and I'll need to annotate a previous video because of this, but if you land a universal overhead on Hanzo or Juzumaru, they are in hit stun just a tiny bit less, my guess is one frame, than the other six characters. If you land a universal overhead against the crouching character as Hanzo, close hard kick will combo against the other six, but it will not combo against another Hanzo or a Juzumaru. My guess is that their hurt box is just a little bit taller, and so they have one frame less of hits done. If you're not an intermediate or advanced player, all you really need to know is that you can always do low jab, low jab, but against, uh, and against every, against, um, excuse me, against the six characters that are not Juzumaru and Hanzo, you can combo a close hard kick and then quarter circle back hard kick, but it will not work against Hanzo and Juzumaru. Now, um, crouching light punch, light punch is the basis of all her stuff. Um, if you're able to get um, a nice, a nice clean hit of something else, you can just hit fierce punch into quarter circle back hard kick, or you can do crouch fierce into forward light kick into quarter circle back hard kick. And again, all the mix-ups that stem from that. Um, whew, look at that cross-up. Um, basically, your goal with her combos is you want to combo into the EX version of this kick, or to the hard version of this kick, or into super so that you can get that super jump cancel and go for some sort of reset mix-up. That's basically what her strength is. 
and that's what you want to be aiming for in your combos. If you have no meter, what you want to do is you want to combo to quarterback light kick, or possibly go for some sort of mix-up into a normal throw, or even the meterless man grab. Now, BL counters. Every character's got a nice BL counter combo, so what is Hanzo's? Ultimately, her normals don't really have excellent angles for anti-air overall. Her fierce punch is kind of short and stubby. Her light kick is, has a nice angle on it, but it will not cause a BL counter. So in order for you to properly BL counter, like, you're going to be looking for standing hard kick or maybe jumping fierce punch. Like that. Um, maybe a neutral jump fierce punch. But, um... Standing hard kick seems to be the most likely thing, or even a neutral jump hard kick. But what you want to do with her BL counter is after the BL counter happens, you want to hit them with a jumping hard kick. Because after that happens, you get a ground bounce. And then you can go for crouch pierce into a super jump, into a mix-up of some kind, or... As they come off of the ground and bounce back down, one, two, you can hit them with a quarterback hard kick very low to the ground, and then get the same mix-ups that you would in your bread and butters. Keep in mind that if you BL counter with jumping hard kick by itself, you cannot get it again. That causes the ground bounce, but then the next jumping hard kick causes a quick rise automatically. So you can, you can only get the one ground bounce. And so that's what you want to go for. Your ability to actually capitalize off of the quarterback hard kick is going to have to do with your timing. Notice that right there I tried the air target combo, but the second hit missed. It's because I did the quarterback hard kick too early. I need to do it a little bit later, as low to the ground as possible, if I want to take advantage. Oops. Notice it's still too still too high. Honestly, you should probably just go for jump fierce and then go for something simple off of there. But the point is, if you time it right, you can finish with quarterback hard kick and then get all the same mix-ups and combos from there. So she's somewhat of a complicated character compared to the other ones. She takes a little bit more work than the others in order to narrow down exactly what she's about. But if you can get her execution down, what Hanzo's goal ends up being is wreaking havoc with mix-ups following uh, grabs or command grabs or air resets. Her normal throw gives her excellent spot to go for a cross-up light dive kick and then get a combo off that. If you get a super jump cancel, you can do all kinds of grab and command grab and frame trap mix-ups off of one jab, like one jab low fierce, one jab EX grab, if you do it right, just one jab into the regular grab. You have all kinds of great mix-ups that make your opponent both want to block, but also want to not block. She has excellent mix-up ability, and that's why she's considered one of the strongest characters in the game. But you have to level up your execution in order to be able to do that, such as, for example, the charge command grab, finding the right timing to do the dive kicks, and you do, you know, jab, jab, super. You know, how much do you want to use her down, down, punch, teleport? You know, it's all going to come down to your style, but there's going to be a bit of an execution requirement to do her mix-ups effectively. But if you can do that, she's, she's one of the scariest characters in the game to be facing on the other side. If you're unable to overrun your opponent with mix-ups, she has some very serviceable normals regarding the footsie game. Some decent range, not excellent range, but good enough to where she can play the footsies with the other characters. And that's going to be what you want to focus on if your opponents don't let you overrun them with dive kicks and mix-ups. So that's Hanzo in a nutshell. 
Um, a bit more advanced than the other characters, but also very fun. I like her a lot. Um, I hope you learned a lot in this particular episode. Um, the other characters will be coming soon. Thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.